Hi, I'm Jonathan Sells and I'm the Artistic Director of Solomon's Knot. I would really like to talk to you about one of the arias from Bach's St John Passion. And it's an aria that you've probably never heard before. Now that might sound a bit strange, but Bach performed his St John Passion numerous times over quite a long period of when he was the cantor in Leipzig. And the first time he performed it was in 1724 on Good Friday. And only a year later, he performed it again. And Bach being Bach, he never wanted to perform anything the same way twice. So he changed quite a lot of the content of the Passion. And one of the things he did was insert this aria, which I'd like to talk to you about, which is called Himmel Reise Welt Erbebe. Now, if you would like to listen to this aria or watch it being performed, there is a YouTube video with Solomon's not performing it with the bass Alex Ashworth singing it. And I will put a link to that video underneath this one. And underneath that other video, there will also be the entire uh, German text and English translation. Now, Himmelreise occurs in the Passion in the score, it's number 11 plus. Um, <clears throat> coming as it does immediately after the chorale number 11. So in the first half of the Passion, the part that was performed before the sermon. And we've just heard the chorale, Wer hat dich so geschlagen? After Jesus has been given a slap in the face uh, for being rude to a high priest. So we have on the words betrübte Martha here, so all the, all the terrible things which you've been suffering. We have this rather lovely A major cadence. Which absolutely does not prepare us for what comes next in this 1725 version of the John Passion. So apart from anything else, we would not be expecting an aria at this point. We'd be expecting the story to continue uh, with the evangelist and with recitative, um, because the normal structure of a passion is that we have a passage of recitative which quotes the Bible literally, um, and then perhaps an aria where uh, you'll have a, a single singer or perhaps a duet um, singing a, a poetic text which is a very personal uh, reflection on what's been happening in the Bible story. And then you might have a chorale, which, was a, which would use a traditional church text, which would be familiar to everybody um, as a way of bringing everybody together and summing up how, how they might feel about that situation or putting a, a sort of theological full stop to a certain passage of a passion. So we've just had a chorale. One paragraph of the story has been finished. So what we're not expecting now is for one person to come out and start singing emotionally about their response to something. And what happens is this. Let me play that A major cadence again. And then we hear this in the continuous section. And you might be thinking, what on earth was that? So far, we've only had two other arias in the Passion. Uh, we've had von den Stricken, um, where the alto sings about being tied up in knots. And we've had Ich folge dir gleichfalls, where the soprano uh, sings about following Jesus very happily. And so on. Traditional arias, normal introductions, a melody instrument, the bass section. And this just erupts out of nowhere. I mean, what, what even is that? 
what kind of harmony is supposed to go underneath this thing. I mean... Maybe. Uh, all these tritones. When we get to here, okay. Then we maybe know where we're going, and obviously when we finally end up in this cadence. in F sharp minor. Nasty key at the best of times. Um, but this sheer expressionism of this uh, figure, which is played just in the continuo section, so very raw, very bassy, um, is quite bewildering, really. And then at the cadence, the bass comes in and gives us an inkling of what might be going on here. Himmelreise. Okay, Himmelreise. Heaven rip. Um, and then the next words he sings are Weltherbebe. World shake, like in a in an earthquake. So okay, we think this could be the ripping of the sky if you want to think in terms of visual metaphors. And this very odd figure going down can also make us think of some kind of earthquake. Um, but I mean, something so bizarre, something so dramatic that just appears as if out of a fissure in this, uh, in in the in the fabric of the passion, like a kind of monster that comes out of of lava. In a, in a place where it shouldn't even be. And as the aria continues, um, we are surprised by even more elements. At the moment, we have a very active bass line, um, a very agitated bass singer. And what happens when he sings, fall into my tone of mourning, falt in meinen Trauerton, we suddenly hear over the top of all of this tumult, this chorale theme. In soprano, Jesu deine Passion, which is the 33rd verse of Paul Stockmann's chorale, Jesu Leiden, Pein und Tod, a chorale which appears three further times in the Passion after this point. So that those uh, who would have heard Bach's Passion a year previously in 1724, which presumably would have been quite a lot of the people in, in, in that Leipzig congregation in 1725, would know that, that chorale features heavily uh, in this work. Um, and it will be used actually imminently in the in the piece to sum up the section of Peter's denial. Petrus, der nicht denkt zurück. And then come back perhaps most effectively in a four part harmonization during the aria Mein teurer Heiland towards the end of the piece. So we've got soprano singing this chorale over the top, but at the same time as the sopranos enter, we also have two flute parts that go with the chorale, something like this. So, ornamenting it, but also with quite a lot of dissonance. And so on over the earthquake bass line. So we've got four completely different elements. If you want to take the two flutes as one, as one entity, you've got the continuo line, the bass singer, the chorale, and these flutes at the same time. And the bass, the text of the, uh, of what the bass sings, uh, is extremely, uh, pained and emotional. So he sings, fall into the tone of my morning, the sound of my morning, see my agony, 
and my fear that I suffer with you, Jesus. And whilst he's singing that, the sopranos are singing, Jesu, deine Passion ist mir lauter Freude. Your passion, your death, all these horrible things that the bass is singing about is and are pure joy to me. And this sometimes uh, irony, sometimes uh, sympathy uh, uh, continues throughout this piece. The way in which the chorale text and the poetic text interact and, and uh, overlap with each other is really quite astonishing. Let's see another example. When he's singing, uh, he wants to choose, the bass says he would rather choose Golgotha, uh, you know, the sight of the cross over, over this despicable worldly uh, place where we're living. The soprano sing, your wounds, your, your crown, uh, a crown of thorns are the meadow to my heart. And when most, uh, most visually, when he says, he sings about um, the way of the cross being sown with thorns. Um, Werden auf den Kreuzes wegen deine Dornen ausgesät, which is quite an amazing image in itself. You, if your thorns are being sown uh, as seeds, as it were, on the path of the cross, um, and the soprano sing over the top of that, my soul travels, my soul walks upon roses. So the soul is walking upon the soft rose petals. And at the same time, uh, the bass is sinking himself into the wounds which the thorns of those roses have created. So, I mean, this is real full on uh, Lutheran imagery of, of longing for death. Um, I mean, he's re literally uh, wallowing in it at this point. And if we just go back to look, a little, look at a little bit more of the musical texture of this, I mean, it's an astonishingly complicated, complicated texture. I just want to show you a couple of things. The way he paints the word Leiden, so to suffer, um, <clears throat> that I suffer Jesus with you on the word Leiden. Uh, you get, uh, just on the moment of the word Leiden, we hear this chord. And the suspensions and the dissonance continues throughout this throughout this bar. Lider, the bass is singing. And another example. Uh, is how it, when he sings, yes, I count your pains, I count the number of your injuries. Ja, ich zähle deine Schmerzen. Uh, he sings, I'm not even going to play the, the top parts, uh, which are going, the flutes which are going on over, over the top of this, but ja, ich prefigure the word painting of the word Golgatha in another bass aria in the piece later on, Heilet ihr angefochtenen Seelen, where Golgatha is the central to, to that piece. Um, here he also sings, I choose Golgatha. Um, ich erwähl, ich erwähl. dotted rhythm on Golongata and uh, for painting the way of the cross there's a very very long melisma on the word Kreuzes wegen werden auf den Kreuzes wegen the thorns we were talking about earlier this is what happens on the word Kreuzes wegen Kreuzes 
So an astonishing painting of a, of a winding, a twisted, a, a nasty, uh, an uncomfortable path. And of course we have the imagery, musical imagery of the cross built into this, which is already built into the, to the theme we heard at the beginning with, the, with this triton. Oh, yeah, the tritone, um, which, uh, and of course we're in a sharp key, uh, Bach deliberately made sure when he was referring to the cross that he always spelt things with sharps rather than flats for his diminished fifths or augmented fourth intervals. Um, because uh, the German word for a, a sharp sign is a kreutz. Um, and of course, when you have a, a, a tritone, you are dividing the octave in, uh, in half. So you've got that segmentation, that uh, division, cutting, as it were, of an octave. So you're hearing this all the way through this melody and overlaid over the bass line. So kreutz. only two tritones but also two tritones that cross over each other so you can't get much more intensive than that and, and there's another another one going on in the bass at the same time so And following on from this section, we enter another realm of total unworldliness. When the bass says, thus I, I see in, in the dying, uh, so erblick ich in dem Sterben, in the, the act of dying. Wenn ein stürmend Wetter weht, so there's a raging storm go going on. Diesen Ort, dahin ich mich täglich durch den Glauben lenke. So, it's a long thought. But what he's saying is, I'm seeing through death to the place where I'm going to steer myself through my faith while there's this massive st storm going on. So there's obviously a metaphor here of a little boat caught up in a storm but somehow manages to... To, to find its way through to its to its goal, and uh, in order to to show this musically, there are lots and lots of images here. So to start off with, so erblick ich in dem Sterben. He's talking about looking through or looking into death itself, and the music of the bass line gets stuck on a pedal bottom E. So this this uh, thundering lands down there on the bottom E and just stays there. So there's this sort of stasis, a lack of life, and the harmony gets extremely strange at this point. So we start off here, in A minor. Turment Wetter weht, and suddenly this activity returns to the bass line, which is absolutely fantastic. And so on. Uh, and the bass picks that up himself. And so on. Until finally, uh, through these harmonic progressions, we end up in A major, finally, as some kind of break through the clouds of this storm. Uh, and the bass singer and bass line end up in this wonderful contrary motion. At that 
point that we hit A major, the sopranos come in with their chorale line singing in dem Himmel eine Stadt, a place in heaven. So we've had all this storm, diminished chords, minor chords. Finally, we get to A major, and the sopranos sing. In the harmony, there we know that the storm's not quite over yet, but what a fantastic moment! And then, as the bass sings about steering towards that place through his faith, um, he finally gets some nice music to sing um, uh, a stepwise melody, and the bass line calms itself down into a nice running figure. <laughs> from the theme at the beginning but the, the waves slow down it's more it's more harmonic apart from anything else and he sings <laughs> and so on so and there's this amazing through this long melisma on the word lenke steering you know, you really get this impression that he's got incredibly wide horizon. He's really steering towards where he's going. I'm just going to play what he sings on the word Lenke. <laughs> that was all just the single word Lenke. I steer myself. And Bart's got. Uh, one more trick up his sleeve for us here, one more uh, stumble which happens before you think that everything's everything's going to be okay and that the sheer weirdness of, of where we started is all resolved. Um, <clears throat> the cadence of this uh, of this section <laughs> Cadence nicely into uh, F sharp minor. The steering didn't work out so well. Complete break in the music. And then. And then we do finally end up in our home key of F minor. So. As if it wasn't difficult enough already, uh, there are always uh, stones which the devil throws in your path when you least expect it. And this daily steering, you never have, you must never let go of, of your faith in order to, to find your way to a safe haven. And then the aria ends as strangely as it begins, uh, with this naked uh, continuo line, all the other instruments disappear. And we're left thinking, what just happened? And before we know, the evangelists carry on with the story. And so on. Uh, I mean, utterly bizarre and also in terms of its imagery uh, this picture of heaven ripping makes us think of the veil of the temple uh, the earthquake after Jesus has died this doesn't belong before Pilate's even started interrogating him Bach what are you doing and afterwards you know we're back in the room uh, just pretend nothing happened Absolutely astonishing, absolutely amazing, and as you'll see, the way that Alex Ashworth performs it, very strong in its impact. So I highly recommend you get to know uh, this aria, Himmelreise Welt Erbebe, sadly not very often performed because it's not in the standard version of the John Passion that we know. 
but well worth digging into. Uh, it is an absolute treasure trove of musical gifts and amazement.